May the spirit of the living God give you wisdom, grace, mercy, um, ears to hear, understanding so you can believe. Because that's the emphasis of this video. And I titled this video for a reason because, you know, you have people in this world that profess the name of Christ, but still do not believe of what is talked about in the word of God. Um, I titled this video because I wanted to do a part two of this video. Um, generational curses is biblical and it is. It is biblical. You know, if you do not believe that generational curses is not biblical, you have not have understanding of the scriptures. So the word of God, the Holy Ghost give you understanding. The Holy Ghost is supposed to teach you all things. And so sin began with the fall of man. Like I said in the last video, um, sin is a curse. Sin is generational. Generational curses begin with the fall of man because God cursed the ground. And meditating on the scriptures, meditating on the word of God, especially Deuteronomy 28 that talks about the blessings and the cursings. Now, uh, I, I did mention that chapter in another video I did some time ago. But if you read Deuteronomy 28, it talks about, it gives you... Verse 1 through 16, God bless you, brother. Verse 1 through 16, these amount of blessings when it comes to obedience to the Lord. And then you have this amount of curses, if you can see my other hand. It's a, it's a scale, a weighing scale, blessings and curses. God curses for all that disobey. And that's just plain to sin that you see that through the whole entire Bible. He blesses those who obey. He curses those that, that disobey. So curses is, what that meaning is, is profane, is to speak evil of. It has many different definitions um, of curses. What curses mean and what curse mean. It means profane. It means that you are defiled from within with evil defiled from within you have curses that come out of your heart the word of god jesus says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so i was watching something matter of fact it was, it was some time ago um thinking about comedians and what the world laughs at um, and the reason why people do not believe on the things of God, you have to understand that straight is the way that leads to life. Many are called, but few are chosen. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many are on it. So you, I was thinking about the uh, comedians that tells foolish jokes. Uh, I'm not going to mention this one comedian's name because I don't want anyone to go Google search on what he said or search out or do some research on this comedian. But he professes to be a Christian. He, pros he professes to be an, a believer in Christ Jesus, that one who obeys. But yet, now he has a show. He has a TV show. And um, he still does uh, stand-up comedy. And so... He has a TV show and people ask him questions and he gives his response. And yet, and he professes that God is true. God is, uh, he believes in God, his beliefs on God and the things of God. Now, he, he turns around and does some stand-up act, some stand-up comedian act. And then he expresses himself by saying that being a Christian is hard. And he says, I can't help but the curse. I can't help but to do these things that God hates. He didn't say it that way, but that's what's his, that was his expression as a stand-up comedian. And people are laughing. People are 
um, heckling and ch and chuckling and you know laughing at these foolish uh, foolish jokes that he is expressing himself and what he calls being real, and yet he his lifestyle is governed by foolishness. So he expressed himself and he also said some false things as well. You know, his true side came out. His true side came out when he was on stage. And so on what he really thinks about Christianity. And to before I say this, I want to uh, point this out as well that unbelief, unbelief is a generational curse. Let me show you why. I will show you in the scriptures and I will show you by modern day time and what people do. So the stand-up comedian expressed himself and saying being a Christian is hard and I, I have to cuss. He says, I have to cuss. And then he says this, that will distort the mindsets for those who was laughing at his foolish jokes. To distort the mindsets, he says there are many ways to God. You know, just like Oprah Winfrey, who who mentioned it some time ago, and she probably still believes, but it distorts and it confuses because that's the devil's job to confuse you. He wants you confused. He does not want you to mention uh, the truth or speak the truth. So this this famous stand-up comedian who has shows uh, in his in his show, his TV show. He professes to be a Christian, but then when he does a stand-up comedy act, he expresses himself in blaspheming God and blaspheming Christianity as, and expressing that he is an unbeliever. And he, he, I forgot what else he said, but it was just, you know, he is governed by unbelief. He has a generational curse of unbelief. So... The people who are laughing at his jokes, so they... What he is saying, because he has a microphone, so a microphone here is, is designed to make you hear everything this person is saying. Everything he's standing before an audience and why they are laughing at his jokes by expressing himself of him being real. That's what he says. Uh, and he says these things about Christianity, so these people are laughing, positioning in their minds that and their hearts Okay, Christianity is, is is hard. So I don't need to be a Christian. I don't need to be I don't need to be believing because I can't help but a curse either. So that that is what he is he was doing on stage. And then in some other video um that I saw a time ago that he he says there's many ways to heaven, just like Oprah Winfrey. So that being said, the uh the, the unbelief is a generational curse. Where is it at in the Bible, Joseph? I just told you. Sin began from Adam. Sin is a generational curse. A generational curse from generations. 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 You must understand that you have to be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I've seen some stuff in Revelation that made me think about what I just uh, spoke about the comedian who expresses that Christianity is hard and he can't help but the curse. So, Revelation 16 I was reading, meditating on, and it talks about the plagues. Um, I'm going to read here. Should I start in, Lord, should I start in verse 1? Hmm. So, I'm going to start at verse 15. Now, Jesus says this. The resurrected Jesus says this. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walks naked and they see his shame. Now, it goes on in verse 16. It says, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out the vows into the air. Now, there was angels pouring out vows, pouring out plagues and the wrath of God to a disobedient nation, disobedient, or it's judgment of God, pretty much. Um, the seventh angel poured out the vow into the air, and their third 
in there. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there was voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake and such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city were was divided into three parts. And the city, the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God. To, so this is the judgment day of God. God, um, it says, to give to her the cup of the wine and the fierceness of his wrath. So the wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. Unbelief is definitely a generational curse. Unbelief is a definitely a great sin before the Lord. And in verse 20, uh, Revelation 16, it says, And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And it says this. Now, to, to what made me think about this as I read Revelation, it made me think about, man, what level of unbelief or the generational curses of unbelief because you have to believe to continue to obey. You have to believe on God. You have to believe on Jesus Christ in order to obey him and endure. If you are not, if you're listening to other things, if you are uh, setting your eye on wicked things and listening to ungodly things and lies and laughing at foolish jokes, you are going to be deceived. And that's what the devil wants for your life. You're going to be deceived and you're going to think on, you're going to think yourself that Christianity is hard. You're going to think on yourself that um, I can't help but the curse. Now, this is what it says in verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. They was blaspheming God because of the, the how uh, plague, the, 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 because of the plague of the hell. Now, a plague is an epidemic. Um, it is a great sickness and describes in many different uh, forms of that. But it says, because of the plague of hell, for the plague there was, it was exceedingly great. Um, also, before I, I should have read this verse, but that was the last part of that verse. But that the fact that men blaspheme God because of the of the the greatness of the hell and the plague of it. Um, I'm trying to find it. Where is that? It is in. Down the sea. Let me see. Because you have justice. Oh, right here. Verse 5. And I heard the angel of the waters say, You are righteous. The angel of the now the angel of the of the waters was saying to the Lord, You are righteous. O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because you have judged this. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. And you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. And fourth angel poured out his vial upon the, upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men. Here it is. To scorch men with fire. Now, because of the uh, unbelief, because of the sins of the world, and they, they chose to listen to the, the, the devil and obey the devil and receive the mark of the beast. But it says this in verse 9. And men was scorched with great heat. And what they do? They blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues. And they repented not to give them glory. So they did not believe. They, even with that was going on because it was governed by unbelief. And that's what it is if you can imagine hell and how horrific that is. You cannot repent in hell. You cannot believe on Jesus in hell because you are set. Your judgment is set because you have lived a life governed by the generational curse of unbelief. Generational curse can also be a, dem a demon spirit or it could be in your family as a familiar spirit. And it's disposition in, in your lifestyle when you... Have a mindset of unbelief. You see that in the Pharisees. You saw that in the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection and Jesus came at them and rebuked them. So it says that I gotta read it again, verse 9 of Revelation 16. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which has power over these plagues, and they repented not to give them glory. 
Because God is supposed to be glorified. God is glorified in your thoughts, your heart, your life. Your lifestyle is, to, is supposed to reflect Christ Jesus and his righteousness and his holiness. Ho without holiness, no man will see God. So you can be conformed to this world and allow your heart to be involved with the cultures of this world and can say Christian rap is okay or getting tattoos is okay or watching the sports entertainment is okay or watching the media and let your heart be affected by what you see, especially what's going on in this world um, that was prophesied in the word of God and the cares of his life and you can be governed by unbelief you can have that generational curse on your life and your mind and be affected by it and guess what the devil wants that for you he wants you to be cursed so he can so you can spend forever with the devil and be a part of the lake of fire along with his demons because God did not give uh, or prepare hell for the for mankind, but for the devil and his angels. And so, and it says this, And the fifth angel poured out his vial or his bowl upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. That's what it is. The, nat, the weeping and gnashing of teeth, Jesus describes what will a person be in hell. You will be weeping and you will be gnashing of teeth. You know what gnashing of teeth? You're grinding your, you're grinding your teeth. Because of you, you're gonna be like, I can't believe that I'm here. I had a chance to choose Christ, but yet I chose my sin. I chose not to believe. I chose to watch things that God that God despises. I chose to give my heart to lust and adultery and fornication. And I didn't I didn't choose holiness. And even so, this is it's horrible for the unbeliever to the and to the lost, but for the one who believed and still governed by unbelief, oh, it's even more horrible because you now you know the word and the you have been warned by the word of God. You've been warned by the preaching of the gospel and the meditating on the word day and night. You choose to not believe, you invite yourself or you and open your doors to generational curses and it will affect your life and then if you die in that conditions guess what it says in revelation 9 uh, 21 i believe that's the first thing and verse 8 no that's the second thing but it start. it says but the fearful and unbelieving now it, it also gives a list but it says, these people will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, God did not create hell for mankind. He created hell for the devil and his angels. Please understand that. So, you have a generational curse of unbelief. And it's not the only generational curse because sin is a curse within itself. Because sin offends God. You have, you, you have hidden things of dishonesty. Hidden things of dishonesty is a generational curse. And that is biblical. If you don't understand that, you are classified as blind, which Jesus described in the end of John chapter 9. The Pharisees said, are we blind too? And I... I have to read it because I forget how it's worded. But I have to reference I have to reference the word of God because this is a must need to be preached. John chapter 9. I turn to give me one second. All right. Jesus says this. Uh, for judgment, now he's, he, he, he's telling the, the blind man whom he healed, and he revealed himself or who he is to the blind man. But he says this in verse 39, for judgment I am come into this world that they which see not, not, which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. So the Pharisees were aware of what he said, with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Jesus replied, if you were blind, 
you shall have no sin. Meaning, if you were blind because you believe with, you believe on the Son of God, you believe on the, on the Messiah, Jesus is the only one that can reveal truth to you. Then he says this, but now you say, you say with your own understanding, you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So the Pharisees took it on their own understanding that they see because they 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 reveal to themselves that they, they don't believe, but they think they have the understanding of the scriptures. They the Jesus rebuked them. He said, uh, you you search the scriptures, but in them you think you have eternal life. So that's what's going on in this world. That you have unbelievers, you have people who profess Christ, but still have uh, uh, power. They still have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And they think they are believing, but they don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Or don't believe on the things of God when it comes to those who are truly born again. Those who are truly been redeemed and obedient and faithful and holy unto God. They see that they 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 see that Christian and then sometimes only even examine themselves and be like, man, but Christian rap is it is holy or this what I watch, there's nothing wrong with that. You are made blind. You, you are the one who is classified and says, we see, therefore your sin remains. So you think you have understanding. You think you have wisdom. And then it, it's um, also in Revelation 19. I want to go there too. I'm going to go there. So the spirit of um, deception. There are many... I got told one but time before, one time, that there is no such thing as the spirit of uh, homosexuality or the spirit of this or the spirit of that. Have you not read the scriptures? Okay, let's look at it like this. Matter of fact, this is in the word of God that Jesus says. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall from heaven as lightning. And also described that a third of the angels, a third of the angels fell behind Satan. Now, how many is a third of the angels? Who were the third, the third of the angels? The, the third of the angels are fallen angels. The fallen angels are demons. The fallen angels are legions of demons. How many was in the in legion? How many? There was a, a, a over a, a thousand, probably three thousand demons in legion. And what makes you think why do you think the, the pigs, the swine, couldn't handle the demons inside them? Why do you think they ran off a cliff? Because the legions of angels was in the swine. So, for you to believe that there is no such thing as the spirit of this or the spirit of that, the spirit of dumb, or the spirit of homosexuality, or the spirit of stupid. The word of God says there is a spirit of stupor. The word of God says there is a spirit of dumb. The word of God talks about all kinds of demon spirits. And yet people choose not to believe the word of God. But it's written. It is written. Have you never read the scriptures? I have to emphasize that. Have you never? And I have to ask that. You have to think that you are leaning to your own understanding. Your mindset is set in unbelief. So there is a generational curse of unbelief. That you don't believe what the word of God says, but yet you lead to your own understanding that thinking that you understand it. That is a generational curse of unbelief. Please understand that. And if you don't believe Brother Joseph, hey, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just giving you the truth. You don't have to believe Brother Joseph and what it says, but death and hell is the consequences for not believing. Now, Revelation 19, it says this. I saw some something else that was interesting. Hmm. Let me see. Now, verse uh, chapter 19. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 1. Now, it just... Oh, yeah, verse 2. That's the one that stood out to me. So, verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2. It says this in verse, uh, chapter 19 of Revelation. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven... Saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. These are those that believe. 
Verse 2. For true and righteous are his judgments. Let me stop right there. Where else it says that in the word of God? Um, it says this in Psalms 19. Um, this is why, and also this is why it says, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And it also says his judgments are true and righteous altogether. And it's more to be desired than gold. Yes, than fine gold. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. And moreover is your servant warned in keeping of them. There is great reward. Where is that describing, Brother Joseph? Well, let me tell you. It's describing obeying Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, is more precious than any uh, precious jewel. It's more precious than any fine gold, any precious merchandise on the face of this planet and you must desire obedience is be better than sacrifice you must desire obeying jesus christ i'm telling you that's why it says for true and righteous are his judgments for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and then it goes into this. And again, they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up and forever and ever. And the four, the 24 elders, the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and you that fear him, both small and great. Where's that one scripture at? Uh, uh, verse 8. I have to skip down because I want you to get you to understand this. Now, this is for all that believe. This is for all that are holy. This is for all who want to spend forever with God, who set their eyes not on wicked things or evil things, who listen not to the media, listen not to other resources, who are not deceived by foolish comedians, who are setting their heart and mind, who, whose eye is single and their body is full of light because they're focused on the word of God and his will for your life. It says this in verse 8. And to her, well, I saw the blind. Let me back it up. It's verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come. And his wife, we are, we are his wife, we are the bride, has made herself ready. Jesus says, in Matthew 24, verse 44, be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He commands to be ready. He commands to be prepared. That's why you have the wise virgins, the five wise virgins. I got to read that again because it's so encouraging. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. And it says this in verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Guess what that is? Guess what that represents? It represents the righteousness of the saints. Because that's the next sentence in this verse. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So, when we stand before God, the true, the true born again believers. When we stand before God, God judges us and we will be... Spending forever with God in white linen. The white linen represents the righteousness of God. And it says this right, it says this right here. A key component to that, you must believe that Jesus Christ is holy. You must believe his commandments and obey and endure to the end. We don't set our minds and hearts on evil things. We don't get distracted. We don't... Uh, Believe in culture is in the righteousness of, and I put, I'm going to put quote unquote, quote unquote righteousness on culture and the cultures of this world and then try to mix it with the holy, holding and mix with profane. We don't mix holy with profane. That's what the ungodly do. That's what the compromise do. That's what the lukewarm do. The lukewarm does these things. I got to read that again. Revelation 19 verse 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. The bride of Christ, us, the true born again believers, will be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and white. Remember I told you, I quoted that scripture in Psalms 19. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. 
arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he says to me, right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he says to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, see thou, you do it not. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know what else is the spirit of the, you know what else is the testimony of Jesus? It is the gospel. It is the gospel of Christ Jesus, our Lord. He's supposed to be your Lord. He's supposed to be your Redeemer, your Savior. Not just with your mouth, but with your heart and your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is supposed to reflect Jesus. You're, because we are, we are in the New Covenant. We are in the New Testament. This is not the Old Testament. We don't have to sacrifice bulls and rams and goats. And to offer burnt sacrifices unto the Lord. That's the Old Testament. Jesus is the New Testament. We believe on him. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Meaning, if you love me, obey me. If you love me, obey me. And so, I want to look at the six things the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination. Oh, before I get into that, also in Proverbs chapter 6. Now, another um, generational curse is laziness. I want to take a look at that. That is a generational curse. How is it a generational curse, Brother Joseph? Have you never read Proverbs 6? Have you never word have you never read the word of God in Proverbs chapter 6? It says this: Give not sleep to your eyelids or to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself as a roe, meaning a deer, from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Or a bird. A fowler is a bird. Go to the ant, you sluggard. What's a sluggard? One who is sleeping all the time. One who is lazy all the time. And does not seek after God and his righteousness and repents of it. Consider her ways and be wise. So it's focusing on the ant because the ant is always busy. And wise. Which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provides her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How? And it says this. Now this is a question. For those who are... Dealing with slumber and, and slothfulness. And you, you must confess that to the Lord. Lord, I'm, I feel tired. You don't say that you're tired. Because you have to be careful what you say before the Lord. You have to be wise and not, and the word of God says to not be hasty in your, in your words before him. As I paraphrase that, because that's in Ecclesiastes. That is in Ecclesiastes. It says, how, it says, how long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will you rise out of your sleep? When, you are, when will you arise out of your sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So will your poverty come as one that travails and your want as an unarmed man, as an armed man. So what is that saying? You continue to allow the curse, the generational curse of laziness. You continue to give into that. You will become poor. And poverty, poverty is another generational curse. Poverty is, is a, a rooted out of laziness and, slump, and sleep, sleepiness and slothfulness. That is a generational curse. You must understand that. It, can, it does happen. But, and if you don't confess that to the Lord, Lord, I feel tired. I feel sleepy. The, and I need your strength. You think the Lord will not give it to you? He says... Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And to he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. And he will give it to you. He gives wisdom to those who ask. He, he should be your strength. The Lord should be your strength in the life. He should be your strength in your life and the length of your days. And it talks about that. And so that's. One of the warnings, you must take wisdom into consideration because wisdom is the principal thing. Now, to the six things that the Lord hate, the Lord does hate, yet seven are an abomination. Now, these 
is, I believe, the root of generational curses because, like I said in the video before, that I believe that these, and I could be wrong, but I believe that these uh, six things, yet seven are an abomination, was in the heart of Lucifer, and this is what got him kicked out of heaven, trying to represent the five I wills. A proud look, a pr you know, that's rooted out of pride. He, he, he got caught in his conceit, and the Lord saw this in his heart, and he had a proud look. So pr a proud look rooted out of pride is a generational curse because you deal with yourself, you look into the mirror, and you keep on looking into your mirror, you fixing yourself, and you stay in the mirror, you are in the generational curse of pride. And, and arrogancy, that also describes arrogancy. A lying tongue, that's the next thing, a lying tongue. Who is the father of all lies? The devil. Who is the father of all lies? Lucifer. So he, the five I wills that's talked about in Isaiah 14, it, it was a lie because he said, I will be like the most high. I will ascend up to in the, into the mountains to the highest. And I can't remember the, the five I wills verbatim, but it says that in Isaiah 14. And all five was a lie. A lying tongue. The Lord made the devil a liar in many cases. In the book of Job, he, he, he said, uh, he, he tells the Lord, the Lord of all creation, tells the Lord, God Almighty, he says, Job will curse you to your face. And then the Lord uh, gives the devil uh, access to Job's life. and But yet he commanded the devil not to kill him. So the Lord proved the devil wrong by because of Job was classified as faithful and perfect. He called Job perfect. But yet the devil said that Job will curse you to your face. Who were, and I'm like, in my mind, and in my thoughts, I'm like, who are you to tell the God of all creation who made you that this individual who God calls perfect will curse you to your face? You are a liar. A lying tongue. That is a generational curse. Lying is a generational curse. You, your father, the devil, you love to lie. The righteous hate lying. The word of God says that in Proverbs. The word of God said also says, to, I believe it's in Psalms or Proverbs, to deliver my soul from lying lips. That's what it says. And hands that shed innocent blood. That's the, this is the next one. So that's murder. Hands that shed innocent blood. What did they do to Jesus when he was on the cross? They, you know, he was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgressions. So that's hands on the innocent because Jesus Christ was innocent. He knew no sin. He was blameless. They found no fault in him. So he was innocent. Yet he was condemned like he was guilty. And they wanted to release Barabbas, a murderer, a robber out of insurrection because of the stirring, stirring up of the crowd by the chief priests and elders. And they wanted to release uh, Barabbas instead of, instead of Jesus. But, you know, I thank God they did not release Jesus because it wouldn't be the will of the Father. It would not be the will of the Father. So that's hands. That's an example of hands that sheds innocent blood. Um, and another thing that abortion is another one. Hands that shed innocent blood. So that is described as an abomination. A heart that divides wicked imaginations. You are planning to do evil. Your heart is devising wicked imaginations. The word of God says in Psalm 52, it says this. Why do you boast yourself in mischief, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. And that's what people do. People love evil more than good. People love to do evil because of their heart and the conditions of their heart. Based on generational curses, they give into things. They give into the things and the devices, the crafty schemes of the wicked. And they love it. So a heart that divides wicked imagination is an abomination to the Lord. Feet that, what's the next one? Feet that swift, that, that be swift into running into mischief. Feet that run, that are swift in running to mischief. Mischief is, 
is another word for uh, persecution verbally or annoying. You know, you love to be, you love annoyance. You love to persecute the righteous. You love to disrespect the righteous and the holy. Feet that be swift to run into mischief. So you love to fight. You are quick to fight. You are aggressive. Aggressiveness in unrighteousness. You love to fight. That's a generational curse. That is a generational curse. A false witness that speaks lies. We already looked at a lying tongue. But a false witness, meaning a person who is proclaimed to be righteous, but yet they prophesy lies or they speak lies and deceive many. Just like the person, the comedian who I described in the beginning of this video. It was an abomination to the Lord what he said about Christianity, that there are many ways to heaven and that Christianity is hard. And I can't stop cursing that what you are expressing is an abomination to the Lord. And guess what else that is? That is a generational curse. That is a generational curse. Feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies. And he that soars discord among the brethren. So you want to plot or talk about or gossip or be indirect in bringing down the righteous or speaking about the righteous. You are so, you, you are sowing discord and that is an abomination. And guess what else that is? That is a generational curse that you need to repent from. And it says this in... Encouragement in Proverbs uh, chapter 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's commandments, forsake not the law of your mother. And it says this, bind them continually on your heart and tie them about your neck. Now, the spirit of the Lord God on Solomon speaks to those who believe. If you want deliverance, believe what the word of God says. I'm going to read that again because it's so powerful. My son, keep your father's commandments. Keep the father's commandments. And forsake not the law of your mother. Bind them continually on your heart. What does that look like, Brother Joseph? Memorizing scripture. Memorizing the word of God. Applying the word of God to your life as a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And tie them about your neck like it's an ornament, like... You wear righteousness around your neck. You wear righteousness, the righteousness, I put emphasis on this, the righteousness of Christ as a garment. That's why there's a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garments of praise represents the righteousness of Christ. The white and fine linen that's talked about in Revelation 19 is the righteousness of the saints, is the righteousness for them that believe on the Lord. When you go, it shall lead you. When you sleep, it shall keep you. Because the Lord gives his beloved sweet sleep. And it also says this in Ecclesiastes. The sleep of a laboring man. The, the, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. It says that. And when you awake, it shall talk with you. So you, bind, you meditate on the word of God day and night. It is describing this. When you go, it shall lead you. The word of God leads you. He wants to instruct you. He wants to, he want, the Lord wants to um, give you the path to follow. When you sleep, it will keep you. So your sleep will be sleep because you're seeking God in prayer. You're reading his word and you are a worshiper. And when you awake, it shall talk with you. His word, God wants to speak to you. God wants his relationship with you. And his spirit teaches you all things. As described in John chapter 16. For the commandment, God's commandment, is a lamp, is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Correction and instruction, meaning rebukes, are the way of life. Uh, it says in another passage in Proverbs, I believe is 12, I believe. Rev Let me go there real quick. It talks about the, you know, the reproofs of instruction. Yes, it says, Whoso loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction or reproof is brutish. In another translation, I believe it's the New King James Version, it says, He who loves, he who hates 
uh, rebukes is stupid. So brutish and stupid is in the same sense that this word is describing. Whoso loves instruction loves knowledge. Meaning if you love command, if you love obeying the word of God and loving the instructions, whether it is the Lord or your godly ordained leaders, your pastors, you love knowledge. But he that hates reproofs or corrections or, re or rebukes is brutish or stupid or foolish. The word of God says, let a man let a man uh, be mauled of a bear. Let a man meet a bear robbed of her whelps rather than a fool in his folly. It is better for you to be ripped apart by a mother bear robbed of her cubs rather to be in foolishness. That's why the five foolish virgins were not prepared. Not prepared. Not ready. And Jesus commands to be ready. Be ready for the Son of God is coming at an hour you do not expect. A watchman is ready. The righteousness of the saints in Christ Jesus are prepared every day. What does the preparation look like? Meditating on the word day and night so that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf will not wither and whatsoever he does, he will prosper. That's what preparation of the saints look like. Preparation of the saints also looks like obedience to the Lord God Almighty and worshiping him. The blind man rebukes the Pharisees in John chapter 9 by saying, Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but he who is a worshiper of him and does his will, he hears. God Almighty hears the righteousness of the saints. That's why it says in James, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. It also says in Proverbs, um, God is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. How do you get right with God? By believing, by trusting in the Lord, by obeying Jesus Christ, renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty. If you are, and you know, we ask the Lord to examine yourself. Lord God, I have a, you know, renouncing all generational curses of, a, of unfamiliar spirits or unrighteousness or, or unbelief or about uh, you have you might struggle in lying or being dishonest or adultery or lust or fornication, all these hidden things in your heart. God wants your heart clean. The Lord God says in um in David in Psalms 51, created me a clean heart, renew me with a right spirit. So the believer in Christ Jesus, you ask the Lord in examination, examination of yourself. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew me with your Holy Spirit. In my heart, Lord God, I am guilty of these things. God will wash you clean because he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins when you confess them. He wants you to be transparent. He wants you to renounce things, renounce things so that you can be clean and obedient and upright. The ungodly are not upright. The, uh, the compromised are not upright. The lukewarm are not upright. Those who are cold are not upright. Those who are mixing the holy with the profane are not upright. Because they look like the world still. And that's a dangerous thing in this life. So generational curses are and is biblical. And if you have not read the scriptures, if you do not study to show yourself approved unto God... You will not believe if you are reading other books that talks about the Bible instead of just reading the Bible. You have a mindset of unbelief. Why do you seek for knowledge? Your knowledge is puffed up. Your knowledge is puffed up. What is that scripture in Ecclesiastes? So many scriptures is coming to my mind right now because I'm thinking about that. And it turned right to it. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. It says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Meaning, you read many books and make many books, it's going to make you weary. That's what it says. 
You don't believe what this says? Then you're going to have issues and problems in this life. And then when you stand before a holy God who is, who is angry with the wicked every day, you're going to give an account of it. You're going to give an account of it. And testimonies, you know, for them that believe, like one of my, test one of my favorite testimonies I have um, was a couple of months ago. I was coming, myself my, and my two sons was coming out of Walmart. It was storming real bad. It was storming. It was like almost violent. And we was inside of Walmart. We was grocery shopping. And then we get, we started to go outside and go to my car. And it was pouring down. This, this lady was next to me. Um, it was like, my, how am I going to get to my car? And I seen, uh, you know, the measure of unbelief. I didn't get a chance to minister to it. But I was, my um, determination was to get to my car. Because I want to, you know, I want to get out of this rain. But it was storming real bad. It was storming tremendously. And then I'm like, man, I'm a son of God. And so I looked in the sky. I was like, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will stop the rain by your power. I command this rain to stop in Jesus' name. Within a minute, within a minute, the storm was at peace. Then I walked to the storm stopped, just like when Jesus got into the boat and it says the rain stopped. The rain was at peace. The, the, the storm was at peace. The sea was at peace. He says, peace be still. If you don't believe that, I don't know what to say, but repent and believe on Jesus. But this happened to me. This is my testimony. I know God is real. I know this is true. He is true. He is faithful and true. Who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Will you be ready? Will you be ready for Jesus Christ to come back? This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.